I'm Greg Hauser. I am a freelance writer. I've written about denim in uh, Men's File, The Oxford American, uh, Refuel Magazine, a bunch of other magazines you've never heard of, some blogs, and I also edit at denimhunters.com. My name is Bill Mitchell, and uh, I own a jean company in Greenville, South Carolina. We do all of our own cut and sew. We do some washing as well, and uh, we use a bunch of recycled materials. So we're trying a lot of stuff out now. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming. So my first question to you is, um, you know, sustainability is, is become a very big buzzword, especially as it relates to denim. So can you actually tell me what is, what is the proper definition of sustainability as it relates to denim manufacturing today? I'll take this one. So, uh, you know, in the denim process, as we make denim, there's a lot of waste. There's a lot of water that's used, and there's a lot of actual just cotton runoff that's, you know, can be recycled and, and used to make more denim. So um, the major manufacturers are starting to take a look closer into what that looks like and um, maybe trim different ways that they could trim and to uh, maybe introduce new materials that are not specifically just cotton that can be better for the environment and can uh, be just cheaper in general to manufacture. Awesome. So tell me, how are, how are, how are um, consumers impacting the demand for more sustainably produced denim? Um, I think sustainability is becoming just part and parcel of everything we purchase. Um, you know, you have the slow food mov movement, you have craft beer, you have all these things that um, the consumers are demanding. They want quality, they want a responsibly produced item. And that's why I think we're seeing manufacturers, uh, we're seeing denim manufacturers responding to that demand. And it's gonna become something that is, you know, it's not something people just want, it's something that they're gonna expect. Amazing. Yeah. And I'd also say on top of that, Social media is massive, just in general, across all markets. So in the fashion world, we want to show what brands we're wearing, and we want to show, um, you know, just what we love, and we want our friends to also love those things too. So if you can go ahead and show something that you love, but is also something that is good for the environment or is socially responsible, it really is good for your own personal brand and is good for, um, you know, just showing something that is, I care about this, I care about recycling, you know, I'm a person that, that cares more. So I, th I think that is kind of changing the whole market, not just in denim, but a across consumer, you know, consumer markets overall. Amazing. So um, what finishing techniques or dyeing techniques are being used by brands that consumers really want? Like what, what's, what, what do you see really t getting some traction and really, you know, coming to life in terms of production on the business side, the manufacturing side, but also um, that consumers are purchasing? Sure. I think there's two ways to answer this question. One, people love raw denim. People love raw salvage denim, both Japanese and American denim. Mm. And the finishing technique would essentially be no finish. It would be you get it raw and you break it in and um, it becomes a story that you tell as you wear the jean over about a year. and. Um, and then on the flip side, there's this new recyclable movement that, um, you know, I, I have a pair of jeans here that is made out of recycled ketchup bottle. So it started off as a really dark blue pair. And so we washed it out to be a very light wash uh, pair of jeans. But on the inside, this is recycled ketchup bottle. So the, really cool. the process is, is pretty simple. They essentially... They'll take big ketchup bottles and they'll blend it up into essentially a cotton ball, put it through a cotton spinning technique and it comes out in polyester yarn and they will weave that through the weft of the denim and uh, that will actually hold its color through a lot of different washes um, and it's, it's a pretty cool, you know, pretty cool inside of a jean. You can kind of see it through the denim so when you're wearing it there's a bit of red coming through the blue and uh, it's a really interesting new thing they're trying to do. Um, the, the denim they're offering, they have recycled beer bottle, soda pop bottle, ketchup bottle. They're doing uh, uh, recycled wood chip denim. And uh, this all comes from Cone Mills, which is in Greensboro, North Carolina. And uh, it's, it's just a very interesting thing. When I found out about it, I, I really wanted some. And uh, my consumers have really loved purchasing this. And 
when you walk around and you tell somebody you have a pair of jeans made out of a recycled beer bottle, nobody believes it. You know, it's a really incredible story to share. And so um, people have been very receptive to it. It's really cool, Bill. Now, Greg, as an editor and a writer, how, I mean, obviously you cover the space very extensively. How have um, consumers um, um, gravitated towards things made out of the recycled material or maybe some of the collaborations like Pharrell did with G-Star or things like that? Yeah, um, it, the, way I, the way I see it, um, like, it's, like Bill mentioned, um, what I work in a lot is the heritage market, the salvage dental market. That's mostly what I cover. And the things, what's been big there has been the no finish, but you know, the, the way these things are going now, it seems like that people are moving toward, sustainability is gonna be driven by one person, um, not one person, sorry. Um, sustainability, there is a consumer that demands it, they really want it. Um, there's a consumer who's apathetic about it. And then there's a consumer who's gonna find out about it later and think it's cool. Um, like I said before, like I think it's just gonna become something that's expected as we move along. Awesome. So what are your opinions on, some of the, on the waterless process specifically? So I, I went to Cone Mills last week and asked them a bunch of questions about their waterless processes and, and, and such and, and all the recycling, recycling efforts that they're actually trying to do. And, um, you know, if there's a drought, there's, a, of course, a smaller cotton crop. So that's going to be a, a big fear for someone like Cone Mills. Um, and uh, if you can go ahead and limit the amount of water that you have in the whole process, of course, there's less waste and it saves money, but it also makes your... Um, product as a mill a little more sustainable and you don't have to worry about the trends of the weather and, and such. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think anything we can do to take a step forward in conservation and being environmentally friendly, I think is a positive thing. I think it's a, a good thing. I think that both the uh, consumers and the, the people, pr the producers are also jumping on board with that. Okay. Um, Here's a really big question. I'd love to hear it from the design standpoint and the editorial standpoint. Some of the resistance that I can see to in denim, especially some of the better quality or the more unique ones, are um, the price points. Do you think that there is going to be a shift in, in, in the way that it... Uh, how do we start making more premium, um, environmentally fan friendly, sustainably produced products at price points that consumers can afford? Uh, Afford. I can actually speak to this one, okay. unlike my last answer. But <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think what's happened recently, there's been such an education with denim consumers that you pay for quality, mm -hmm. you buy quality, um, and there's a movement of buying it for life. And obviously, when we say life, we mean you know maybe a year. You know, if you're lucky, maybe a year and a half. So the consumer, as long as they're being educated, and the manufacturers and their production and the retail are taking those steps to educate the consumer, which they're, they're doing a really, really good job about why you're paying this extra money. People will go for it, and we've seen it happen. And I think if you factor in the sustainability, and this is good for the earth, people are really gonna, you know, have no problem paying extra money. Cool, very cool. And um, honestly, that's all the questions I have. I'm hoping to open it up to the audience. Professor Bendoni, I already see you waving your hand. Okay, I have a question probably for both of you. Um, I love that you went on how to educate the consumer because I know a lot of brands would like to jump on board, but the problem is obviously the cost, um, and they're more than willing to do it, but the way is how do you educate the consumer? What, have you seen anything or any way that, I know, I know they're trying to do signage, but it's a great idea, but how do you do it? I mean, organically pun intended. Um, you know, you've got social media. People who love sustainability are early adopters, and they love to talk about the stuff they're really excited about. Um, if you can connect with people who have big followings on social media, they're going to talk about it, and they're going to spread the, the gospel of your product, and they're going to get other people stoked about it, too. It's a really great way to uh, interact with your audience, with your consumers, and to get people stoked about what you're doing. Yeah, I, I would say the same thing. And back to the um, Bionic Yarn and G-Star collaboration, I think the biggest thing that stands out in that moment is that G-Star is such a large brand and Pharrell and Bionic Yarn is also such a large brand that 
maybe a lot of people aren't going to purchase that specific pair, but I think because two very important people are talking about it, I think it's going to get the awareness out to a lot of different people. And, um, you know, and then, of course, what Greg said, social media is, for me and, and my company, has been the biggest thing because people love, once again, to go ahead and put up a picture and say, these are recycled beer bottle jeans. And it just, the word travels. I think it's a very popular thing for sure. Do you think that brands and retailers kind of can connect a little bit better? Because if you're a brand and you have this, and I mean, do they offer any, you know, any kind of materials or anything that they could help the retailers kind of promote it? Yeah, we are um, in our store. We have an actual. Uh, we have like the chips of the plastic, and then we have like the cotton, the cotton balls, and then it's in a glass jar, so you can actually see the process. So. That's pretty cool, and I think more people can start to do something like that. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. It was amazing having you here.